This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, Episode 143, Feng Shui for Making New Friends. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello there, my fine feng shui friend. We are talking all about friendships today. Recently, there was a post on my feng shui group page, and it was about a woman who had opened up to a friend of hers and told her what was on her mind and in her heart about their friendship, and I think trying to kind of air out some some of the things they were that maybe had separated them a little bit, and then it just backfired in their face. And this is one of those things that just sometimes happens, right? We have friends that are, are in there through thick and thin with us. There are friends who are our frenemies. Uh, they work maybe a little bit behind in the back scenes and maybe undermine us a little bit. We also have friends who uh, do everything with other people and then call us to remind us about it. <laughs> That's never very nice, is it? We've also got friends who call us no matter what, who we always seem to find our way back to no matter what. And then we have those friends sometimes it's just better to cut ties with. But in this time of COVID, we really need friends. We need people in our lives. We need people who don't always see our point of view or, or, or see things exactly the way we do. Sometimes it's nice to have friends who see things from a completely different perspective because, well, it can change our perspective. And sometimes we need that change. And sometimes we can be the change for our friends. And that's the nice thing about friendship that has a real give and take about it. That's at the heart of what friendship is about. Reciprocity, right? It's not sharing recipes. <laughs> but it's about giving and getting. And the two of you having that sort of back and forth, that easy flow. But now with COVID coming up, there's a lot of strife, especially here in the U.S. with people who maybe have very, very different views and feel like, you know, the state of vaccines and what the government's doing and whether it's a hoax, what hoax, whether it's a real thing, which by now with millions of people infected, I don't know how you can not think it's not real, but but there are those, and and they're they're still questioning, and that's fine. And what's happened is in so many families, and I think in friendships, there's been a division, and so we need to you know have those people in our lives that give us an opportunity to socialize, even if it's virtually, even if it's in an online group, even if it's through a podcast. Because hey, I'm your friend, <laughs> I am, and it's a uh, it's one of those things I love to do is is the podcast. It's a lot of fun for me, and it makes me feel connected to you. I mean, you're listening to me right now, and it's kind of a one-sided friendship in some ways because you get to hear me, but I, I like to think that you're sitting right across from me, and if, <laughs> and if I had my choice, we'd both be enjoying a nice glass of wine and hearing some ocean waves, <laughs> maybe in Key West or San Diego or something like that. Pacific, I don't care, Atlantic, doesn't matter. I just love the ocean. It always makes me feel good to be around water, and water is one of those things that it Friendship is the the thing that slakes our thirst for social interaction and engagement. And we need those friends right now more than ever. And if you're finding that, you know, maybe some of your friends are, you know, they're drifting away. Maybe they're moving away. We've had so many people move all over the country because of COVID. We also have people just, you know, it's their time of life. It's maybe their kids are out of college and they decide to retire somewhere, or maybe they just want to uh, put pull up 
stakes and head off somewhere for a new challenge. There's no telling, but we need to keep adding to our friendship, just like to our garden. We always have to add new plants, maybe take out some old ones, or, and some of the plants that are in there might be kind of withering, and, we, and that's just the natural flow of things. But right now, it's so important that we have someone in our lives who, who we can talk to, who we can listen to, who listens to us, who cares about us. And, and this is what this episode is about, is how you can use feng shui to draw more friendships to your life because we need more now than ever. And we need those people in our corner and have someone to lean on when we need, when we need extra help or an, another hand, um, just, a friendly, just a friendly voice on the other end of the phone or on the other end of the Zoom meeting, whatever it is. But let's talk about friendship. You know, we all obviously know that that's one of the greatest joys in life is our, our friendships. And it's also one of the aspirations in feng shui. So in case you're not familiar, the Bagua, the eight-sided octagon, has eight different areas of our lives that represent the things that make us happy, the things that bring fulfillment to us and friends and our social status and our social interaction. This is one of the things that gives us joy in life. And it's a gift of wealth in terms of having friends. That To have the wealth of friendship in, in an active social life is a real gift. It truly is. Now, the area that's reflected in the home is the south sector of the house. This represents also fame and recognition it also represents your family name and reputation, the type of reputation that you have, that your family has. So if you are a Rothschild or, or you're just a plain old Smith, uh, it's, the, it's, it's that part of your home that represents how people see you and how the world sees you. So it's a really important part of feng shui. It's also that sector of material success. And a lot of times we have friends that say, hey, I can help you out with a great deal on a Porsche. <laughs> and who wouldn't want those kinds of friends, right? But, you know, mostly what we want is friends just to, you know, be a shoulder to lean on and a cup of coffee and just a friendly voice on the other end of the phone. And But having friends to do things with and to connect with, especially now since we've been so isolated and disconnected, it helps that you can share your troubles with them and feel with someone that really understands you. But what happens sometimes is you may find that you know, work gets in the way, maybe your family obligations and your social life may have kind of dwindled down so that you maybe don't have as many friends as you once did. Or maybe you find that people that you've been spending time with, you've maybe grown away from or you've grown past. You know, besides love and money, feng shui is so wonderful because it can help you draw things to your life that, that create fullness in life. And that means a lively social life and attracting new friends. So let's talk about some ways that you can add you add more friendship into your life and bring friendship luck to your life using feng shui. So let's talk about how to build your social network and have a friend to enjoy an afternoon outing with, maybe get grab a cup of coffee or just talk on the phone. Let's talk about some symbols and ways that you can attract friends. And one of the easiest ways is to picture it. The, if you've got pictures of friends that are in albums or on your phone, hey, get those things printed out. Put them in frames. I love this uh, one particular, uh, it's an online app, and, and I'm going to say its name begins with simple and ends in prints. <laughs> And I've get no no remuneration from them, but it's super easy to use this app. And I love Simple Prints because you can use this app and you can order right off your phone or your tablet and get those pictures printed. You know, remember we used to go and take those little rolls of film into the into the drugstore, the grocery store, or whatever, and we'd come back in a week and there would be there would be this package, this big a sticky envelope with a, a thick bunch of pictures that we would just like, glossy images that we would sort through and remember all that time that we had fun we had and that time that we shared together it's wonderful to see, to have those types of friendships uh, where you've got photographic evidence of that you can that obviously that you can put in a frame but order some order some prints and get them printed up and put them in frames. I love those collage frames, especially if you've got a group of friends and maybe you you were all at a bridesmaid party or you were at another, some kind of a social gathering or something. Get those pictures up 
get them printed out, put them into frames, stick them on the wall in the south corner of your home or living room, your home office if you have one, even your bedroom. But I personally would prefer to see uh, any kind of social picture in the south corner of your living room or in your home office. It's perfectly fine. Uh, you can, or, or any, any south corner of any room is perfectly fine. But I, it's really nice to put those pictures out and get them hung up. The other thing we want to do is to encourage more friendships and social act, act, interaction is to place pictures of happy groups of people in social scenes somewhere in your house and, of course, in your social sector, which is the South. So look for images that you may have around the house that show solitary objects and people, especially if there's some that look kind of sad or look kind of lonely. We really don't want to project that kind of image because, well, it's sad and lonely, and we're we're looking to bring more social interaction and more friendships to our life and just, you know, people that, that who love and get us. And that's so important that we have those images around us that show that type of, of, of symbolism that we're trying to send out into the world. So if you've got any images of singles or uh, images of a solitary uh, in person, uh, what, no matter what it is, um, look at removing those and then look for the social setting. So for instance, I'm trying to think of some of the, there were some of the impressionist paintings and is it Manet, Monet? No, it's not Monet. I think it was Manet, I want to say. Uh, anyway, it's one, and they have, it's like a gathering in a French bistro or, uh, you know, they show a picnic by the banks on in Paris. And I just, all I know is that they're French impressionists. I'm sorry, my art history is just, you know, now that I'm trying to recall it as I talk to you, it's just like flown out of my head. But that's the idea, is that you're trying to look for artwork and images that are beautiful images that you would use as artwork to display in your home that show people socializing. Because it's a really wonderful symbolism. It adds people energy to your life, which can attract people to your life, friends to your life. These are really nice to put to place in a, in a dining room, for instance, because, well, what kind of a setting do we have when we're socializing a lot of times? It's in the dining room. We're having big meals. Think about the holidays. We have friends and family over. What's, what's important about removing those, those images that we have of solitary subjects or solitary people is that it can add to feelings of isolation and loneliness because it symbolizes that. And what we don't want to do is have that have that isolation and loneliness symbolized because, you know, we already are all kind of isolated at the moment, you know, well, the moment, who knows how long our moment's going to be. 2020 was a moment. Now 2021 is a moment, but be that as it may, what's important though, is that those images, we find another place to put those and, and move them out so that we can see more socializing. Now let's talk about the South and how important it is because when you want to encourage new friend luck, that South sector again is the place to activate. And what color do you use there? Well, that's going to be the red color because it's fired up and it, it relates to your heart. Red goes straight to the heart and the eyes and the heart are related. And when we see red, it fires up our heart energy. It's good for the metabolism too, to see some red colors. It's good for your your, your, uh, your energy level as well. When we see too much serenity, then, and this is one of my beefs that I have with feng shui and the decorating kind of theme that people kind of ascribe to feng shui, it's that you're supposed to be in this zen house and everything is relaxed and balanced and it's a sanctuary. Well, that sounds like a tomb. <laughs> and, you know, to me, you need a house that has some activity too. If you want to have zen sanctuary do that in the bedroom. But elsewhere in the house, you want it to be active, lively, engaged, energized. That's why we want to have that south sector activated with red colors. Now, you can also use a very famous feng shui symbol for achieving fame, for getting more recognition, and also for friendship. And that is images of birds, especially the phoenix. Now, we don't see phoenix Im images everywhere here in the West, but you can use a perfectly good substitute, and that would be a peacock, or you could use a rooster. Well, there's plenty of rooster images you can find all day long, which is just perfect, and they make a great substitute. 
Now, of course, the, the plumage on a phoenix represents others acknowledging and recognizing your unique qualities and abilities. This is what I love about the, the theory of, or the, the sort of the legend of the phoenix is that is those all that beautiful fine feathers. Those are all of the, it fans the, the flames that fan fire, which is the fan and the fire of friendship. So look for those pictures of roosters or peacocks. They're perfect. And, and actually any birds, if you want to put any birds in the south corner of your home, especially like big groups of birds, like flocks of birds, that's very, very auspicious to place in the south corner to activate your friendship luck. Now let's talk about another element that you want to bring into the south sector, and that's simply light. A brit brightly lit south corner helps create more yang energy, and that brings you to the attention of new people and brightens up your social circle. A perfect thing for that is a sparkling chandelier or one of the, I know a feng shui master is one of her favorites is the lava lamp because you see that big, those red globs of, <laughs> of, I don't know what that is that's in, in there that they, they just move and, and, and they're constantly, uh, and they're lit and they're, they're actually hot. Those lava lamps, I don't know if you ever touched one, but they are hot as, as can be, but that having that red glop kind of move around and it's constant in motion is kind of mimics like a fire because a fire is isn't static. A fire has energy. It's the flames are leaping and moving. So we want to think about energy and it's more specifically light energy, adding that bright light in the South corner of your, in your, in your living room. It could be the South corner of your home office. And actually it wouldn't be bad to have the South corner of your bedroom to have a few little twinkle lights. They're kind of romantic and they're not too bright. So if you've got a plant in the South corner of your living room, put some little twinkle lights on it. They're really romantic and it makes a nice touch, especially at night, because that way it's still activating for you and activating for new friendships. It's also really a good thing to put in the Southwest corner as well. So if you want to add a little bit more romance and just open up all the areas of your life to new people, South and Southwest, having some bright lights, red colors, uh, will, will help to really boost the energy in this corner and bring relationships with all kinds of people to your life. All right, now let's talk about you personally. Now, this is one of the things I love to do, and that is to use your personal Qua number. Now, this is the number that is based on your date of birth and the year that you were born in and your gender. Now, based on those two aspects, you have a specific number and, and all the numbers are divided into two, two groups or two buckets, and that's the East bucket or the West bucket. And if you have a qua number that's in the East bucket, then all the East directions are going to be good for you. And the East directions are North, South, East, and Southeast. If you're in the West bucket, then all of the, the, the metal or the west directions are going to be better for you. So that's going to be west, northwest, northeast, and southwest. So those four directions are going to be best for you. Now, if you know your quad number, you can also activate what's called the personal peach blossom number. Now, this is the direction most people use for love, but you can use it to attract new friends too. Don't always, you don't always have to think about relationships in terms of loving partnership marriage. When you're thinking about relationships in feng shui, you are also thinking about, well, just friends and people, you know, and to do that, you want to activate that personal relationship direction. So find your quad number and you can do that by checking the quad calculator on my website, redlotusletter.com and check your number and look for the relationship direction. And it will tell you which direction that is, how to activate it and what colors are beneficial for it. And you can use that direction too in your home and in your home office and your desk, anywhere you want to, to activate it for more friendships. Now, here's another way you can use it. And there's a specific little like ritual and, and, and a thing that you can do that will really help you draw, I would say, deeper relationships, more meaningful relationships. And if you're single, a love relationship. And this is by activating your personal 
peach blossom direction. And to do it, you have to know your zodiac sign. You have to know what your, uh, your, your directions are, where that direction is. And there's a specific set of activities that you have to do. So for instance, you need to get a vase with a certain amount of flowers and a certain color, and you have to place it at a certain time in a certain location. And all this is written out on my article. Uh, uh, it's titled Single Uses Feng Shui to Find Love with Chinese Zodiac Sign. I know it's a long, <laughs> it's a long one, but if you look under Zodiac Sign on the search feature in my, in my website, you will find it. And it's about this woman. And it's, it's someone who has, I've, I've trained and she's just an amazing, amazing woman. And she was single and she wanted to get married and she was intent on it. And in fact, that's why she came to my conference that I taught feng shui consultants how to do con uh, consulting for, as a business. Now, some people did it for their lives. They came to learn feng shui consulting for their own lives. And you certainly can do that because it's, it's a wonderful skill, a wonderful life skill to have. And what she did was she learned all the, the, all the aspects about feng shui. And then she put this little ritual into place. And next thing you know, uh, we've got, uh, she's married and she's got two kids and she's a really happy, happy, uh, person because the thing that she set out to do with feng shui actually worked for her exactly the way she wanted it to work. But what was interesting is the story about it because she had said that while she was doing this this ritual around her peach blossom uh, direction, that what she learned was all kinds of people were attracted to her. Her social life just opened up. And I think that that's a really compelling thing. We need friends. So when you're thinking about doing this, you can, and if you're single and you want love, that's great. But she said, don't turn away the the people that, that call you. Think about the more you open yourself up to a variety of people, whether they're right for you as, as a love interest or a partner in your life, or maybe they're right for you as a friend, that this is a great way to open your social circle up. So uh, don't think of it just for love. Think about it as a way to develop deeper, more meaningful relationships that uh, with people who are who are drawn to you versus you having to go out to find them, it helps you to attract. Now, you've got to do your part too, of course, but I love the idea that it's you're activating your home and your life for, for widening your social circle. And this is what I love about this particular way of using feng shui. Now, another thing that you can do is declutter. Of course, you know, we always hear about that, but it's, it's true. And it's important. Look in that South corner of your home. Have you got a junk drawer over there? Maybe you've got a, a, a big old dresser and it's just full of stuff. Uh, and maybe you've got a, an entertainment armoire. I don't know. You just, whatever you've got, look around in the south corner of your home, the southmost corner of your home. You want to check it and look to see what's there. Do you have anything that is cluttered, that's junky? Do you have piles of something? Is there anything broken. This is another important thing because if you've got something that's broken, maybe you've got a chair in this location and one of the legs is loose, or maybe you've got a crack in the wall in that corner. Look for anything that's broken. Look for anything that's cluttered and clean it up. If it maybe it's got cobwebs or junk or something like that, if it's a closet, clear it out, streamline it and make room in your life for those new friendships to come here. And then the last uh, the last thing I want to encourage you to do is to get out there. You know, you've activated, you've brightened up the whole uh, social area of your home and that is putting that energy out there to attract it. But it also means that, you know, hey, if you hear from somebody, return the call. You know, make calls on your own. Who knows? You may reach out to an old friend that you hadn't heard from in a long time and you may just find that that old friend is open and receptive to talking with you again or, or reuniting. It's just important that you do your part with feng shui because the two work synergistically. Yes, I use that big word. <laughs> All right, let's let's go ahead and uh, and recap some of the three most important tips that can help jumpstart your friendship luck. The first is picture it. You've got friends sitting in a, a pictures of friends and is sitting in an album. Make sure you get those printed off. Put them in frames and put them out. See your friends. Have them see you. It's it's great symbolism to put out pictures of old friends when you're ready to attract new friends. 
Tip number two, brighten up the South. This is a sector of recognition, of fame, and social status, as well as your social circle. We want to brighten it up. We want people to see you. Keep the lights on, add twinkle lights, turn on the chandelier, add a chandelier, anything to lift the energy up in the South Sector. And candles are an excellent way to brighten up the South Sector and introduce a little bit of that fire element. And lastly, find out what your quad number is and activate your personal relationship direction. You can also activate your personal growth direction. Heck, why not do both? But I really want you to activate your personal relationship direction because it helps relationships, not just with love, but relationships of all kinds, like friendships. And if you're really serious about making new friends and widening your social circle, look up my peach blossom ritual on redlotusletter.com with a search under love zodiac sign. And you'll find the article about single uses feng shui to find love with their Chinese zodiac sign. And there's all the directions are there on how to activate your particular zodiac sign that will also help you with your peach blossom luck and finding more friends, widening your social circle and getting yourself out there. All right. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. It's been fun talking to you, my feng shui friend. I'll talk to you next week.